Teardown and failure analysis time. This is a Philips uh, MR16 bulb I had in my home. Gave fairly good service life, but unfortunately it now tends to blink on and off randomly, suggesting something has failed. Now, if you are a fan of my channel, you would recognize I did a lot of LED uh, teardowns uh, earlier on. Uh, this Philips bulb is uh, interesting as usual. There was a tremendous amount of design variation. This one's no different. Uh, Philips always tried something new. This one has a glass envelope, and of course glass is prized for its ability to uh, conduct heat away. Very important. Uh, it's a 620 lumen bulb, I recall, and it is uh, a 50 watt uh, replacement. It's a terrible form factor for LEDs because it's very hard to get heat out of them, even though they have very intense light. Let's uh, sort down what happened to this one. Um, yes, there does appear to be a crack in it. I don't recall dropping it, so I don't know if it shattered during operation or a uh, side effect of why it's failed, but let's um, crack it open and see what we can find. To sort down what's going on, I've removed the glass envelope. I have it connected to a 12 volt power supply, and then I have an oscilloscope connected to the uh, output of the power supply, which is in the white base to the uh, LED array. So here's a normal power on the voltage rises. Ah, no, here we go. Here's the failures. The, uh, perhaps you can see a light flickering below, but it, uh, it gets this mode where the power supply starts to become unstable. Bulb flickers, and of course I took out of service because that wasn't very desirable. So the glass envelope uh, obviously has been removed. Uh, we have the two-pin character coming in. White epoxy compound, uh, probably designed to remove the heat as much as possible, draw it away. Very hard to do because there's not much thermal path going this way. And uh, it looks like a power supply board with the... Uh, Electrolytic capacitor here peaking in between and then some discrete uh, components and uh, probably the semiconductor is going to be on the other side it looks like on this one. Uh, challenge here of course is to get rid of this epoxy. Probably the best thing to do is just boil it in some uh, hot water. So to take this potting compound off I've got it in a pot of water and it's heating up. The uh, potting compound will go through something called the glass transition temperature and uh, after that uh, it gets soft and you can then uh, take it off with like a plastic spudger. Uh, once it cools down it hardens back up so it's sort of a repetitive process to get these assemblies taken apart. Okay, uh, remove the epoxy. Uh, some clever engineering. This is an MR16. It's a really tricky form factor to design uh, an LED bulb for because it's a constrained space. You can see a design engineer put the connector so it comes on the very edge of the circuit board and then they tuck this uh, electrolytic capacitor in the middle. Um, on the circuit board uh, we can see a couple of uh, inductors. Uh, this is a boost topology. This uh, assembly was being fed with 20 plus volts. Uh, we have an integrated circuit on this side and I'll just flip it over. i got to change focus so I think the camera won't be able to focus on the top here. Uh, yeah. On the top here uh, we just see some uh, discrete components that are probably uh, associated with the power supplies and we see the capacitor sticking out again. Here we have the connector going up to the uh, LED assembly. So the likely candidate which has failed to this bulb is going to be this capacitor, the electrolytic. Um, and that's where we're going to start the analysis, see if the value of that capacitor is still holding. If it is, we can tear down further, but uh, history tells me that this poor thing has probably been heated up and uh, has outgassed and uh, no longer has a very high capacitance. So sure enough, here's the capacitor and... Um... It's reading about 82, 83 microfarads. It's marked as a 220 microfarad unit, so clearly the capacitance is significantly reduced, which would cause all sorts of stability problems. So I suspect this component uh, has gone bad. So as you can see, it's marked 30 volts, 270 microfarads, uh, so that is no longer true, unfortunately. The other thing you notice is the uh, temperature range rating, and this is minus 40 to 105 degrees centigrade. I suspect, of course, that bulb does get well into that range, and uh, it just cooks off the electrolyte inside the capacitor. Um, and this is really not unusual. Uh, all the LED bulb failures they've torn down almost always are a failure of the capacitor. And, of course, you might ask yourself, why does the vendor pick these? Uh, they are cheap, of course. Everything's about economy. The troubles here, a few pennies saved here, essentially makes this whole assembly uh, unreliable. And uh, it's unrepairable, as you can see, with all the potting compound. It's, it's virtually impossible to repair an assembly like this. I'm really surprised, actually, uh, organizations like the EU haven't started to ban these capacitors because uh, they really are a leading cause, I suspect, of uh, electronics going out of uh, into the landfill. I mean, an LED bulb is not a fashion item once you've assembled it and put it into your house. It's really quite unlikely you're going to sit back and say, oh gosh, I'd love to have the latest model of uh, LED light bulb. So, 
Um, really good candidate, these durable goods, to have uh, some sort of regulation which uh, drives the uh, reliability higher because of the cost uh, differential to do so is exceptionally low. Okay, well, why do people use electrolytic capacitors? If you want to get a sense of what something costs in high volume manufacturing, go onto a distribution website. Uh, here's a part number it's 270 microfarads, 35 volts, so pretty close to what we're looking for. Uh, 53 cents for each part. Uh, if you take the distribution price and divide by 10, you end up with about 5 cents. And that gives you actually a fairly good estimate of uh, how much a thing costs in manufacturing. So hold that thought 5 cents for a, a typical electrolytic. Okay, well, of course, the question becomes what should you replace an electrolytic with, which has high reliability? The go to would be a polymer uh, tantalum capacitor. Now, here's a typical one from distribution. Again, you can see, of course, the instant problem, $6.51. Uh, that's obviously 11 times more expensive than the electrolytic. But, of course, again, a distribution, that'd be around 60, 60 cents. Uh, if you put down two of a lower value to play that game, you can get it probably into 50 cents fairly easily. So, you know, an extra 45 cents. The bulb sell price is around uh, $22. Uh, so, obviously, if you add 45 cents, that's not a really meaningful increase in the product price. Even in fact, if you put the gross, uh, the profit margins up, you'd probably add a dollar to the bulb. Uh, the problem is, of course, uh, the vendor has uh, no motivation. In fact, they'd be penalized if they were to try to uh, increase the reliability of this bulb because consumers don't really buy on that reliability signal, and a vendor, with the other competitors, would put in uh, cheaper parts and undersell them very quickly. So, yeah, and it's a real problem, of course, because that assembly is completely uh, un. Uh, repairable. It's glass, plastics, um, potting compound. In fact, it's unrecyclable as well. I, mean, I don't know how you'd recycle these bulbs. Um, it's unfortunate. Now, I know uh, this channel actually started off doing a lot of LED teardowns, and eventually, actually, I got the uh, eyes of some fairly senior members of the EU uh, uh, technology committees who are following energy efficiency standards. I gotta say, you know, this, um, in fact, LED bulbs actually got some regulatory support when they uh, started to ban incandescents to drive consumers toward them. I think there's another rich vein of uh, ecological savings to be had here. For these sort of bulbs, which, you know, are going into long service life, um, we really could divert a lot of waste in our society away uh, by just um, demanding higher reliability capacitors, which would uh, drive the vendors into a, a slightly different choice and a slightly different increase in price. But quite frankly, as a consumer, I would far prefer to pay $22 once every 10 years rather than $22 once every, you know, three years. So there we go. That was a teardown of the Phillips and a bit of a rant on uh, electrolytic reliability.